Hey guys, we're talking about DR, digital radiography, about the technology behind the flat panels that are used in digital radiography, and about the three different types, both indirect and direct, and then there's two types within the indirect flat panels that we're gonna be talking about today. Stick around all the way to the end, we're gonna talk about a comparison between them, so you're gonna know about how they work and how they compare relative to one another. Also, if you're new to this channel, click down below on subscribe and click on the little bell icon so you can get notified when we have more content that's interesting about radiology. So direct versus indirect, those are two different types of flat panels. Direct, you're skipping a step. Indirect, you have an extra step and that extra step is actually generating light. We'll cover indirect flat panels first because those are actually more frequently seen within the clinic. Indirect flat panels also have two different types within indirect flat panels, depending on how they're read out. So you can have either an indirect flat panel read out on a TFT or a CCD. We're gonna cover both of them. But both types of indirect flat panels, they start with one thing, which is a layer that we call a scintillation layer. And that's the layer in which the X-rays are gonna come down, they're gonna interact with that scintillation layer, and out from there come visible light. Visible light's coming out after the X-rays interact with that scintillator. You have a couple different choices. You have a gadolinium-based scintillator that a lot of times are, is referred to as GOS or GADOX, but the gadolinium-based scintillator has good light output, but the light is coming out relatively isotropically in kind of a cone coming out from where the x-ray interacts. And the idea is that that is blurring the signal. So if there's an alternative that could do less blurring, that would be desired. And that is actually called cesium iodide. So it's a crystalline structure where the crystals are grown in columns. So because the crystals are grown in columns, when the x-ray comes down, interacts, then the visible light is gonna ping back and forth between the sides of the column more than it's going to spread. And in that way, you get higher spatial resolution because there's less light spreading. We're gonna first cover the TFTs. And a TFT base panel, you have your visible light being generated. And then in order to convert that visible light into a signal, you use a silicon photodiode. So the light comes down, that visible light interacts with the silicon photodiode and generates a current. That current from the silicon photodiode is an electric analog signal and coming out that electric analog signal, we need a method to digitize it and to separate them, separate that current out into the individual detector elements so the first option is to use a TFT or thin film transistor array. So the TFT array consists of a glass substrate on which different things are essentially etched or built into that glass substrate. And it's typically done based on silicon. And the idea is that there's an active area within each detector element. There's a capacitor within each detector element to store the charge. And then there's a gate or switch within each detector element in order to say when we're gonna address and wanna read out the charge that's stored in that detector element. So you have, again, light coming out from the generation process in the scintillator. That's measured in the photodiode. And then the photodiode is converting to an electrical signal. That's gonna be measured in your active area of the TFT array. And then when you wanna read out the given signal, it's gonna be, uh, there's gonna be a amplification process. And then there's gonna be a analog to digital conversion so that we can read out a digital signal for each of those detector elements. So the TFT arrays is the same technology actually that's in your flat panel displays. In your flat panel displays, 
the individual addressing of each of those elements is actually used to turn them on and off such that you can say, yeah, you'd, you'd like to have light going on in that pixel on the display. Likewise, we can use other technology that's in your cameras, namely a CCD. And the CCDs are very good at detecting visible light, right? And converting that to signal. So that's something we wanna do here. After we have our scintillator, we could convert that visible light to a signal. But the problem is the CCDs are relatively small. So you have a relatively large flat panel and a relatively small CCD. So you need some way to essentially demagnify the signal, that visible light signal. There's different options, including lenses and fiber optics. But the idea is you wanna bring that light and collimate it down to a smaller size. The CCD array can convert the visible light signal to the electrical signal, and then it can convert that electrical signal and read it out as well. You don't need that additional step of the silicon photodiode that you had in the TFT array. The one thing is that we need the light to be collimated down, and so that's gonna happen more easily if the light is more forward focused. And so the cesium iodide is gonna be preferable for CCD-based arrays because you want the light to be more forward focused, whereas in the GADOX based scintillator, it was more diffuse. The important part about understanding the direct and indirect flat panels is to hit the like button down below so that you can pay it forward basically so that more people can see the video and learn about the direct and indirect flat panels. Now we've covered both the types of indirect flat panels and it's time to go on to the direct flat panel. So the direct flat panel, the physics is a little bit different. We're skipping that stage of generating the visible light and we're gonna go to electrons directly. So you have an amorphous selenium layer that's the size of your flat panel. The X-rays come down, they interact with that amorphous selenium layer and they're gonna generate both electrons and whole pairs. So if we apply what we call a bias across that selenium layer, there's gonna be a positive charge at the bottom and a negative charge at the top. And then we can pull the electrons down. And as we pull those electrons down, the flow of electrons is actually just an electrical current. So that flow of electrons, that electrical current can be measured directly using a thin film transistor array. The same thing we talked about in the indirect flat panels, we can have one of those behind our selenium layer and we can measure the signal directly there. So in comparison with the indirect panels, we get to skip that step of having the silicon photodiode because we have electrons measured directly. Once those electrons are coming in, they're going to be measured within the active area of the TFT array. The charge is gonna be stored in a capacitor for each of these detector elements. And then the switch or the gate is gonna be used to address each of the detector elements and to read each detector element out. A major advantage of direct DR flat panels is higher spatial resolution because those electrons that are coming down, they're gonna get pulled down relatively directly will not spread out. Whereas the light photons did spread out in both cases, in the cesium iodide and the GADOX case, the photons, the light photons did spread out. It was less in the case of cesium iodide, but the direct panel really has the advantage in terms of spatial resolution because there is less spreading of the electrons as they're gonna be coming down and measured. Now we get to the comparison. We're gonna be talking about your three big choices, again, a CCD, TFT arrays for indirect or the direct measurements with flat panel systems. So depending on what your task is, if your task is mammography, where spatial resolution is of the utmost importance to be able to see those microcalcifications, then you're gonna wanna go with the direct flat panel. You're gonna get the highest spatial resolution out of that type of system and so if you can't afford it, those are gonna be the most expensive systems. 
the readout is not as quick, so it would not be as good for a system that needs to do angiography procedures, for instance. The other reason that the direct flat panels are not as great for large patient imaging is that they are better at detecting lower energy x-rays in comparison with higher energy x-rays. So for mammography, you're gonna to wanna to go direct flat panel. Then for general radiography, you have the choice between CCD and TFT arrays. The TFT arrays are more common within the field. They are gonna be a little bit more dose efficient because you're not gonna lose any of the photons in the light uh, demagnification process that you have within a CCD based system but the CCD based systems in general will be a little bit less expensive compared with a TFT system. So at a high level, you have that trade-off of dose efficiency versus expense. And in general, the TFT systems are the more common systems for general radiography. And then for mammography, you're gonna wanna go with a direct flat panel. Finally, there's another option that we didn't talk about here, which is called CR. It also actually does use a digital signal in the end. And we're gonna have a video coming up right here in the link once it's ready.